and Zeb are always hamming it up before my videos, so you know it's free pet time. Okay, it's time to start. What's up YouTube? I'm Joe. You're watching my channel Ink and Iron, and today is the typewriter collection video. So uh, turns out I have seven typewriters. I don't know how I got here. I live in a very small apartment and this is too many. So two of these machines I'll actually be willing to uh, part with. One of them may be a parts machine. We'll see what happens. But first up, right in front of you, here's my Olympia SG-1. And uh, when I got this machine, it was actually covered in black paint. Someone had literally taken a rattle can and just sort of sprayed the whole thing, like took the platen off, took the carriage off. And yeah, it was, it was crazy. So I stripped it down and uh, it's looking pretty good. Uh, it does have some, some interesting features. This is a wooden knob that I made myself uh, because the other one was all cracked off. Um, it's missing the uh, paper rule and uh, the margin stops, I only had one, so I'm gonna have somebody 3D print me some new ones, as well as, uh, what do you call them, the tab clear levers I don't have right now. So yeah, I have to get some replacement parts, but other than that, this machine is working just fine. So I may get some new rubber for this in the future as well. I'm gonna do a quick 360 on this machine, and then we'll switch to the next one. Can see that knob there. Turned that myself. Missing the decal on the back. Yeah, this thing was a huge mess. I'll have a video eventually about how I cleaned it up. All right, on to the next one, also a standard. Here is my second typewriter. This is a Royal FPE. Um, e stands for Elite. So this is the Royal FP with an Elite. 12 pitch uh, typeface. This machine was going to be my only standard, but uh, here's what happened. This thing was a wreck. Um, the knob was all busted up, so I have a 3D printed replacement here. The space bar was broken, so I had a 3D print made of that from a friend of mine. Uh, the lid mechanism was really screwed up and still is kind of squirrely, it sticks a lot. The spring works, but the latch, the latch does not always work. Uh, it does have the original spools. That was nice. You really have to slam the lid, the lid down, which is annoying. Um, carriage return works fine. Tabulator, it does kind of work. There you go. I have the margin set right there. And here's why. If we release it, right, and then try to go past it with the tab, it just sort of stops. There it goes. Yeah, the carriage at a certain point just stops moving. And it's like just past the margin of a normal piece of paper. Uh, I have emailed J, uh, not JJ Short, um, but I did. I replaced the, the rubber on this platen um, during the course of repairs because I was like, oh, it's going really well. It's all coming together. I might as well get new rubber. So I have a this is like a 16 inch platen. It's got brand new rubber on it. And uh, turns out it's not as useful as I thought because the carriage stops. It doesn't sound good either. Yeah, it's, it's really hanging up today. But um, I'm not sure what's going on. I emailed Dwayne of Phoenix Typewriter and uh, told him that I, I did all the thing. I, I removed the carriage itself, which is not a trivial task for this machine. Remove the carriage. Uh, couldn't figure out what was going on. Tried adjusting the carriage rails down here. Nothing seemed to fix this this eventual stoppage issue. Um, so I'm really not sure. It's like right here. I can feel it right about here. Yeah, the bell works, but um, as you can see from the scratch, something either fell on this machine on this side or it was dropped because um, the carriage return lever was grinding against the ribbon cover. The whole carriage was, was pretty jankety. Um, so this is about as good as this machine gets, unfortunately. Um, so I may I may end up parting it out, or if somebody knows better how to fix this thing, you know, let me know. But uh, Dwayne basically told me, 
I took it further than he even would have for a repair of this magnitude and that uh, if I couldn't find it then um, this was probably probably junk so unfortunately I have a parts machine with a brand new platen uh, if you happen to need this slightly wider carriage uh, it looks like 170 millimeters Wait, is that accurate no 17 is like a, a 16 or 17 inch platen um, I can give you an exact measurement if you're interested but yeah the Royal FPE uh, almost worked out but I you know failed and uh, got myself the the SG1 which you know ironically kind of looks similar with all the the cobbled together parts that it has so there you go quick 360 on this guy it's not a it was labeled CC, so in someone's business, it was just the uh, carbon copy machine, which is a real shame because this this 12 pitch um, typeface is, is pretty nice. Nice tight lettering. Um, not sure. I think the the H might be a little off, but yeah, it's a machine not worth doing any more on. So, on to the next one. Here's the next machine. This is an Underwood Leader. Um, 1950 something version um, turned out pretty good I like this blue color a lot the uh, internals were pretty clean uh, it didn't have any like felt this is a rather simple machine in terms of its you know mechanics you don't have a color selector you don't have a um, touch control it's pretty austere in terms of its engineering but uh, yeah, the, the felt was in good shape for the type bar rest. Um, I just put a little bit of um, automotive sound dampener in here to uh, keep it from ringing as it types. It was like dinging and ringing every time you struck a key, so now it's much more muted. Um, original rubber on there does seem to work. There is no tab, no tabulator. And um, the one thing I couldn't get uh, perfectly well was the bell. Yeah, kind of anemic. Like if we try and hit it. Yeah, doesn't always work. So, not sure what's going on there. Seems to need more force than is available in the in the regular typing mechanism to make it sound. <clears throat> so, yeah, um, but this machine is one I'm willing to part with. Uh, it does look very good, make a great display piece. Uh, it's pretty easy to type on. Um, I think I do need to do one more flush of the uh, type segment, which I would do before I, I passed it on to someone. But uh, yeah, Underwood Leader, I think aesthetically, this is one of my more um, preferred machines. I, I think it's the blue. The blue really stands out nicely. So let's get a little 360 on this guy. You can see the logos are in great shape. Yeah, overall, it's in pretty good condition. Um, I would like to fiddle with the bell a little bit more. And again, just clean out the type basket one more time just to make sure it's good. Yeah, this B feels a little bit sluggish, but all right, on to the next one. Next up, my favorite typer of all of them. This is my Olympia SM7. Take that off of there. So the SM7, and this is the deluxe version. I don't know if you can see the deluxe, you know, label right there. This one's got all the bells and whistles, color selector, um, little carriage lock mechanism. Ah, oh, there we go. Disengage has the little switch blade. Paper rest, yeah, pretty cool. Has a little ruler on it as well. Get in there, okay. Uh, yeah, quite like this machine. It's, um, I have the tab sets to actually type with. Just trying to get the bell to work. Come on now. Has so many tabs. What? Where the hell was my margin bell? I just realized I have the bell jammed up with uh, tape so that I wasn't annoying my girlfriend with the, the bell going off all the time. Let me take it out so you can hear it. Trusty spring hook. Got the little 
tape wad out of there. So let's hear the bell. Nice and crisp and clear and quite loud. So very happy with the performance of this SM7. I got it locally for like 40 bucks. Uh, they didn't know what they were selling because the logo is absent. So yeah, I needed to do very little work to this machine. Um, it's in really great shape, actually. You can see it's it's pretty clean. I did not have to do much, I am being honest. And yeah, really solid. Doesn't ring and ding and rattle. It uh, has a really great typer, and I think eventually I'm gonna take the platen off and get new rubber. Um, I just haven't been willing to to go that far with this machine. I don't want to screw it up, and I've never removed a platen from um, an Olympia uh, portable before. So, but I have the repair bible. So eventually, we'll get to it. So, here you go, my favorite typer, the SM7. I don't really go to type-ins or anything like that. I am very much a loner, so this is my typewriter experience, all the, the machines that we're seeing here. Okay, on to the next one. This next machine did not have a handle. I actually made this handle out of some scrap leather and uh, button snaps that I had lying around. However, it is not removable. I have stitched it in place, so yeah. But the color match turned out pretty good for the original case here does have some discoloration from some feet. Um, I believe they're the feet of a different typewriter, which is weird, because this Royal Futura 800 is in great shape. Um, check it out, I even have the uh, Royal Futura dust cover. And I know it's kind of yellow, uh, but trust me when I say it was way more yellow and disgusting when I got a hold of it. <laughs> so it's a, a miracle that it's even clear, but Look at that. Hey, the ribbon cover actually pops open on this guy. Uh, it's a remarkably good typer, honestly. A little clunky sounding, uh, but I don't mind too much. Uh, where's the lock on this guy? Ah, right over here. Lift up. There we go. Uh, it's just a 10 pitch machine, I believe. Uh, it does have these little paper wrists here. I just like the aesthetic of the Futura. Um, definitely one of my favorite looking machines. Um, also has this sort of, uh, you know, straight razor style um, carriage return lever, sort of like the uh, Olympia SM7. I'm a fan of that, that style. I think it feels good to sling it across when you're typing. But uh, yeah, similar story here on not having to do too much work. Uh, the rubber is actually in really good shape. It almost feels new, uh, but I don't believe it is. I got this on eBay for, uh, I don't know, I'll put the put the price down here in the corner. Um, but yeah, I paid essentially like, you know, retail eBay price for this just because I wanted a Futura. And uh, yeah, I, I like typing on it. I've even gone as far as putting, um, I don't know if you can see them on the F and the J key, little uh, tactile dots. They're like clear colored dot. You know, they're called color dots, but they're clear so that you can find home row without looking because um, I was having a good time using this machine. Um, yeah, mechanically sound. And uh, let's see if we can get the bell. And there we go. It works. You can see a little bit of more sound dampening insulation back here. Um, I prefer to add that to my machines rather than felt just because the felt like gathers dust and odor and all kinds of nasty stuff. So yeah, prefer this, this rubber coated with mylar. And uh, yeah, I'll give you the, the nickel tour here. It does have magic margins, be careful with those. If you have a royal with magic margins and a, the carriage doesn't move, it is probably the magic margins. Just a little pro tip. All right, on to the next machine. Here is the first typewriter I ever owned. I got it when I was 15 and uh, I am 30 now. So I've owned this thing for half my life. And if you're a collector and you're looking at this case, you're probably asking, uh, Joe, what the hell am I looking at here? <laughs> I have replaced the uh, Bakelite handle. There was nothing wrong with that handle. I just hated it. I hate Bakelite. It makes a horrible clacking noise. It's not a real plastic. 
it is like a wood fiber composite. I hate it, okay? It's just, I hate it. So I, I got rid of it because I'm never going to sell this machine. Uh, I thought about it like a year or two ago, but uh, yeah, I've decided not to. I restored the case, put a layer of uh, acrylic paint, one layer, maybe two, might've been two, just to fix raggedy edges and, and stuff like that. Tore off the handle, replaced it with this thing, and uh, even added some rubber feet, uh, some rivets. But this is my original typewriter, Royal Quiet Deluxe. This is the 1947 version. <clears throat> I really don't know what the um, you know the the Hemingway version of this machine is. I have heard everything from 1947 to like 1950, uh, which is a drastic change. The next step in evolution of the Royal Quiet Deluxe is the Dreyfus model, I believe, which is much more linear and and um, hard edged and architectural than this 1947 version. So. Um, yeah, this thing is my baby. I've had it for so long. It has a tabulator. It is like uh, one of the fancier machines from the 40s. Uh, the bell does work, I believe. Yeah, I, I like this bell. It's not too, um, you know, intrusive, not too loud. I did end up replacing the uh, draw band, which on this machine was a string. It was a waxed cotton thread that was like falling apart. So I replaced it with some uh, 300 pound test kite string. And uh, yeah, this was the first machine I ever restored, restored and mostly just cleaning and, and tweaking of mechanisms. And uh, I found like a loose spring in here that apparently does nothing. I haven't found any function impediment on this machine. So I'm not really sure what exactly that spring was doing. I really can't find where it went. Um, I did get some original royal uh, ribbon spools for this thing, and uh, yeah, it is a pretty nice typing experience. It's not my favorite. Um, I don't think I'm a huge fan of glass key tops, but when this was my only machine, it was just fine. And uh, yeah, I used to do homework on this thing I would because I could type in my room. We only had like a family computer desktop, so I used this to uh, type privately my thoughts in my room and do homework and papers and take notes. So yeah, it uh, has a special place in the collection. I don't think it's ever gonna leave. I don't plan on it. So let's just take a little 360. The uh, crinkle finish on this machine is in really great shape. Uh, the logos, not so much. You can see it's pretty faded back here. It's quite hard to make out. It does have a full tabulator. So yeah, this is, um, I don't know if it's an elite, like if it's a 12 pitch or not. Um, but the imprint is pretty good. So there you go. That's my Royal Quiet Deluxe 1947. And we've got one more typewriter. Last but not least, one of the better finds that I've gotten in my local area. This is a Hermes Rocket. The case is intact. If you saw my case cleaning video, you'll know how absolutely disgusting this case was and uh, it looks great now however the uh, the zippers I think you can see it fraying back here the zippers do need to be replaced so if anyone um, you know it knows of a uh, local to Denver or even like a regional um, handbag restoration service uh, I would definitely like to contact them please drop me a comment uh, because the zippers on here are, are sewn in and I have I have no clue how to go about that personally so I'm not even going to attempt so yeah if you've seen a uh, Hermes baby or Hermes rocket before this is you know the thing slide this forward and your little uh, I think you call this like a pinch carriage lever it's a cute little mechanism you know built to be compact it doesn't stick out very far from the machine um, this thing types very easily um, it's almost a little hard not to like mush the keys you got to be very very exacting in your um, you know striking the uh, platen is pretty hard but not too surprised this machine has actually traveled the world according to the guy I purchased it from um, 
yeah, he, he took it to like South America and Europe and stuff. So this thing is more traveled than I am. Um, not to mention far older than me. But uh, yeah, the gull wing covers work. Uh, it's got some old vintage spools on here, which is cool. Um, no color selector, um, but it does have a carriage lock, shift lock. Um, yeah, it's, it's a pretty simple, like sort of journalist style machine. But uh, yeah, it's quite good looking. So let's get a little, little 360 here. I'll take it out of the case for that. Get out of here, Case. Yeah, you can see the logos, maybe. Maybe you can see them. They are intact there. Yeah, it's a good looking machine. Very compact. Uh, I, I like the uh, portability of it. Uh, if I could go back in time and, and get one of these as my first typewriter, I may have not gotten another one. Uh, pretty Pretty cool machine. All right, but that is my entire collection of typewriters. If you have any questions for me, please drop a comment. And uh, yeah, if you want to see more typewriter content, I also do uh, multi-tools, knives, um, some DIY stuff, um, handwriting, fountain pens. So yeah, this is my vlog and I do what I want around here. So if you want to see more, stick around. Anyway, I'll catch you on the next video. Bye.